So um, Theo mentioned uh, I'm an economist, and economists uh, sometimes call the dismal science, keep track of a lot of uh, depressing statistics, unemployment, inflation, uh, trade, and budget deficits. But I think there's one statistic that's more important than all the other statistics. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. And that statistic is productivity. Now, productivity isn't everything, but it's been said that in the long run, it's almost everything. Productivity, the amount of output per unit input, is what determines the wealth of nations. And in the long run, productivity is what determines the competitiveness of companies. And it's also what determines all of our living standards and those of our children and grandchildren. If productivity grows by, say, 1% per year, as it did um, through much of the 70s and 80s and early 90s in the United States, when I was uh, uh, looking back on, uh, when I graduated from uh, my PhD program, looking back on the recent history, then it takes about 70 years for living standards to double. Uh, in uh, late 80s, Bob Solow, Nobel Prize winner, one of my colleagues at MIT, uh, famously said, we see the computer age everywhere except in the productivity statistics. And he was noting how disappointing it was that despite even then the wondrous improvements in technology, it hadn't been showing up in the productivity statistics. Well, since then, the uh, productivity statistics have changed quite a bit. Starting in the mid-1990s, productivity growth roughly doubled. And then in the past 10 years, it's almost doubled again, up to uh, on the order of 4% per year. In fact, this last quarter, uh, it was up about 6 or 7%, um, although that, I don't think that's necessarily sustainable. That's as we're coming out of a uh, out of recession. If productivity grows at, say, 4% per year, then it only takes about 17 years for living standards to double. And after 35 year, 34, 35 years, they've quadrupled. And after 70 years, instead of just being doubled as they would have at 1% growth, they're about 16 times higher. So that obviously gives you a lot more resources to deal with all sorts of uh, problems, social issues, health care, whatever it is that you want to work with. So if we can improve our productivity growth rate, that will swamp most of the other economic variables and other issues and problems that we have. What I'm going to talk about today is the role of information technology in driving productivity growth. And in particular, the way information technology has uh, driven innovation, which is really the, where productivity comes from. I'm going to describe four specific ways that IT is driving innovation that I've uh, identified from visits to our companies and it's beginning to show up in the data and the way that the technology is driving, is enabling those types of innovation and also the way they interact with one another. So that's the game plan and I'm hoping, as I mentioned, that you will all have some questions and comments as we go along. Now, the past year or two has, have been kind of rough ones in, in the U.S. economy and the world economy. It's been the biggest downturn in uh, output statistics since, uh, they, well, since they were keeping output statistics at the Bureau of Economic Analysis. Um, and some people have come to be take, calling it the Great Recession. But sticking with my more hopeful spin on things, I think years from now we may be looking back at it not as just the Great Recession, but really as the Great Restructuring. Because we're seeing some fundamental changes in the way companies are doing business. Technology has opened up some possibilities, and only recently have companies begun to harvest these new uh, possibilities and changing the way things are, are working. Um, in some of my work, as, as uh, Theo was mentioning, I've looked at microeconomic data. We've looked at companies and their, how IT is related to them. Um, so one of the charts we came up with was this uh, scatter plot, this shotgun blast here that you see. Um, the horizontal axis is the IT intensity of different companies. Each of those points is, uh, is a company in the US economy. Uh, your company is probably up there somewhere. You can probably speculate as to which quadrant it's in. The, the vertical dimension is the productivity, the uh, multi-factor productivity. It's, a, its output is a weighted average of all the different inputs, not just labor input, but also uh, capital and, and materials and purchase services. And there's a couple things that are visible in this chart. I could have just sort of said, OK, on average, there's a positive relationship and maybe given you some coefficients. But I want to show you sort of the, the raw data so you can see how much of a spread there is, because I think while there is that upward sloping line suggesting that on average IT intensive firms are more productive, in some ways the more interesting, is this a laser? Yeah, the more interesting thing that's going on 
is that if you look at it, there are some firms that are up here high in IT and also high in productivity, but there's some other firms like these that are in the lower right quadrant. Now, what's different about them? Is it that they are spending less on IT? No, they're actually spending just as much on IT. And because of the way we constructed the productivity, we also are controlling for all their other measured inputs. There's something else going on in terms of how they're organizing work. Now, over time, you might think that these uh, laggards would learn from the more successful companies, and, and uh, a lot of economists' intuition would be that, that those gaps would close over time, and we'd gradually get a convergence as people learn best practices. So I'm curious, as, as a show of hands, in your industry, it, what's your sense of what's happening in your company? How many people see the gap closing over time in their industries and that the lagging companies are becoming matching the, the leading companies versus um, seeing the leading companies continuing to pull away? How many people see the, the gap closing in their industries? Nobody? <laughs> How many people see the gap growing over time? Yeah, in fact, that's what's happening. It's interesting. There's a little in informal statistics here. I'll have to add it to my next data set. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing that the leaders, on average, rather than the gap closing, the, the gap has been growing between industries. Um, and here's some statistics that show that. Um, this is some data that, we just, that just came out in a... Uh, uh, a series of papers that I'm writing with Andrew McAfee at Harvard, really, and I was at, at MIT, was at Harvard Business School. Um, and uh, let me describe how to interpret this chart. So this is, the horizontal axis is time here, and there's two groups of industries we've looked at, those that are IT intensive and those that aren't so IT intensive. And the measure is how far apart the leaders are from the laggards. And uh, to be more specific, we rank all the firms in each industry separately, uh, in this case, based on their gross profit margin, although I've done it about, with about 10 different metrics and they all look very similar. So think of this as a performance metric. And I compare the top 25% of the firms with the bottom 25% of the firms. That's called the interquartile range to see whether or not the top 25% and the bottom 25% are, are more similar or more different. And what you see is that historically in the 60s and 70s, um, there wasn't that much difference. The leaders were actually pulling away a little bit, but the difference between high and low IT industries w was insignificant. There was no real difference. Then starting around the mid-1990s, we started seeing a bigger and bigger spread where um, in high IT industries, the leaders have been pulling further and further away from the rest of the industry and from the laggards in particular. Now, I want to emphasize here, um, having just heard Brad Smith and talk, talk about high tech and the governor as well, um, that when I say high IT industries, I'm not necessarily talking about companies that create IT. Um, in our metric, this is the whole U.S. economy, and we're looking at companies that use a lot of IT. Okay? So um, high IT is high IT users, the ones that are benefiting from the IT revolution in terms of putting the technology to work, which, of course, is a much bigger chunk of the economy than just the technology creators, just the software companies. And low IT industries are ones that don't use a lot of IT. So whatever it is that's leading to this divergence is especially important in the more IT intensive sectors of the economy. And so what I've been doing recently, um, while my past work looked at the level of productivity, I can go back a couple slides here, um, looking at whether on average that was an upward sloping line, I've now become more interested in the spread, the variance in the performance, why some firms are so far ahead of others, and the, this interesting phenomena that the gap is growing to becoming more spread out, which I should take is, is mostly a, a promising sign because it means the frontier is getting further and further out there, and eventually if we can learn what these successful firms are doing, uh, we'll be able to bring the whole uh, level of productivity of the economy up altogether.